We're going to correct the gradients in the three images. But before we do that, we need to deal with a problem affecting the data capture caused by the camera and the software configuration. This camera captures images with 12 bits of precision, but the data haven't been rescaled to match the 16-bit format the images are saved in. In other words, the 12 bits are occupying the first 4,096 gray levels of the 65,000 in 16 bits. When we disable the STF, the bright white stars practically disappear. This is because the saturation level of the image is very low, approximately 0.045. Working with such low levels and wasting so much dynamic range is not the best option and can make things difficult in some cases. Firstly, because we lose precision in the STF display. Secondly, it's harder to check certain values, like the saturation level in SPCC. It's much better to rescale the numerical values from 0 to 1. We can do this with Rescale, which is in the Intensity Transformations section. We can rescale the channels together or rescale each color channel separately. In this case, the difference between the two options is small. We're going to apply Rescale to all three images. And now, we recalculate the STF. The aim of this gradient correction technique is to cancel out the signal from the objects in the image, leaving only the gradients. We therefore need to know the brightness of the objects in our image so we can rescale the brightness of the objects in the Mars database. We'll do this with spectrophotometric flux calibration, which is in the Image Calibration section. To calibrate the flux precisely, we need to add a quantum efficiency curve for the sensor we're using, as the official release of PixInsight doesn't include it in its list of sensors. The camera used to take these images is an attic horizon, and its sensor is the Panasonic MN34230. It's easy to find this sensor's curve by searching the PixInsight forums. Once we've found it, we can download it as a text file. To import it, we need to change the file extension from TXT to CSV. To add it to the list of sensors, we need to open Filter Manager, which is in the Global section. Filter Manager is the tool accessed by all the spectrophotometry-based tools. We can use it to modify our own definitions of filters and quantum efficiency curves. With the Import and Export tasks, we can create our own database that only contains the filters and quantum efficiency curves for our equipment. This makes it much easier to configure tools like SPCC. In this video, we're going to import a new quantum efficiency curve. We do this by selecting Merge CSV Filter Definitions from the Task dropdown. Here, we select the directory where we saved the curve, and click on Apply Global. Now, if we open the Quantum Efficiency Curves list in SPCC, we can see the Panasonic sensor. We can now use this curve in both SPCC and Spectrophotometric Flux Calibration. Let's calibrate the flux of the images. To do this, we open Spectrophotometric Flux Calibration and configure the quantum efficiency curve with the sensor we just added and the filters. We add the RGB filters for the color image and the gray filter, which is the Botter L for the luminance image. First, we apply the process to the RGB image. When we apply it to the color image, the gray filter is ignored. And now we apply it to the luminance image. In this case, the color filters are ignored and only the gray filter is used. We therefore only get one curve this time. Finally, we also need to calibrate the flux in the H-alpha image. 
In this case, we need to enable narrowband filters mode. As it's a grayscale image, we're going to configure the gray filter. The default wavelength is that of the H-alpha line, so we only need to configure the bandwidth. In this case, the filter bandwidth is 6 nanometers. Now the three images are ready for the gradient correction and color calibration.